You know, I was expecting a lot of outrage over what I said in the last video, but instead what I got was a lot of approval. Figures I'm not the only one to realize that Charizard isn't really all that and a bag of chips, even though, you know, there's the whole point of belly drum just... HOLY SHMOLY, A LEVEL 24 MARAWAK?! Oh my god, this is going to be one tough little trick. Good thing my team has been eating their Pokeweedies, else I might actually struggle with this one. But as I was about to say, someone brought up the point of Belly Drum not being the best moveset Charizard can have. And I fully agree, it, it can do better th than that, but everything that is not Belly Drum, someone else can do better than Charizard. Be it Moltres, Heatran, Infernape, you name it, you got something that can do it better. Same thing for Typhlosion and Eruption, by the way, just so people don't start asking what I think of Typhlosion. And the only opposition I got was from someone who thought Blast Burn was a good move. Now, either it's a, someone who's joking, or he simply doesn't know better. Either way, I, don't, I think we can all agree that it doesn't count. There was also someone who claimed that the crown for best fire type starter is heavily disputed between the four. That couldn't be further away from the truth. There is an abyss, a huge abyss between Infernape and the rest. Infernape makes the top 10 on the overused list month in and month out, whereas the only other one who can even get close to the top 50 is Charizard, and as I said in the last video, it's because it's popular, not, be not because it's that good. And oh wow, a level 26 Kangaskhan, we gotta bring out the heavy artillery for this one, hopefully it dies from that hit. No! It still survives! It survived a critical! Oh my god! Something is telling me I shouldn't be coming here until further in the game. But, as I said, my team is leveled up and ready to go and ready to take on anything that is a, a little ahead of the difficulty curve. That isn't so bad. But back to the starter thing, there was someone who commented on part 1 of my red LP and I don't remember the exact wording because the guy deleted the, the comment later on but it was something like HOW DARE YOU PICK BULBASAUR or WHY THE HELL DID YOU PICK BULBASAUR? Well, for I picked Bulbasaur for a very good reason. In game, it's the better of the three. Period. It gets an auto critical move, Razor Leaf. Sure, Charmander gets a slash, but does it get stab on slash? No. Bulbasaur has stab on Razor Leaf, and it's auto critical as well. And it gets a sleep move. It gets all kinds of nifty stuff. And let's not forget that Grass is excellent for type coverage, though that Psychic weakness is a bit of a problem, seeing how Psychic, even in-game, is a very fearsome type. Just, just look at how much ass my Alakazam kicked throughout the LP, and even Gengar with Psychic. But Bulbasaur being the best Pokémon out of the three isn't the whole thing. You see, before I began this, I knew I was going to be using Alakazam, Gengar, and the Legendary Birds on my team. That left one spot for my starter, and given that I wasn't going to get anything before I cleared the Nugget Bridge, I needed something that was able to solo, not just get through with help. Absolutely solo the first two gyms and Mount Moon. Charmander, of course, can't do that, and Squirtle hits a huge hurdle against uh, the Cerulean Gym. Though it might win if you play your cards right, but I, I wouldn't have gambled on that. So that's another reason why I picked Bulbasaur. Moving on from the starters topic to another Speed Gamers shill, if only to get my medal for the forums, because medals are the e-manhood for the Speed Gamers forum. Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm not doing that for the medal, I'm doing it because it's for a good cause and the Speed Gamers absolutely own 
So this time it's a Final Fantasy Marathon they're playing, 1 through 12, except 11, and no 10-2, no, no tactics, no spin-offs, no nothing, just 1 through 12, except 11. 11 games is already going to be hard enough to complete in a week, because yes, it's a week long. It starts next Friday, the 17th of July, and it ends on the 24th of July. And they're raising money this time, it's for Autism Care and Treatment Today. And this is, yes, this is the same charity they raised money for during the first Pokéthon. I say first because there's probably going to be another one uh, this December. But yes, uh, I strongly encourage you to go and watch the marathon and please donate as well. This one is special to me because the fight against autism is something that hits very, very close to home. So I urge everyone to donate. Well, if you donated in previous marathons, then more power to you. But this, as I said, is special because, well, it hits very close to home. So the address is the same as usual, the speedgamers.com, and I might as well note that the games are not going to be played in order, because they've already determined who is going to play which game, and each of the players has some commitments outside of the marathon during the week, like work or school or I don't know, but they've got other things to do, so that's why they are not going to be played in order. So. They, I don't think they're going to be announcing the order before the marathon begins either because, you know, things can happen, they can, they can uh, fall behind schedule if there is even a schedule, but you get the idea. Hopefully there are going to be more people in attendance than, than during the Metal Gear Marathon. The Metal Gear Marathon was a really calm one in terms of attendance. We didn't come even close to reaching uh, the number of viewers attained during the previous three marathons, those being Pokemon, Zelda, and Mother, but it probably has to do with the fact that it was not for a charity, because it seems the charity thing really gets people to watch, but at the same time, yeah, now it's Final Fantasy. Six and seven are an institution, so I am going to go out on a limb and say that there will be a lot of people in attendance for these two. Not to say that the others aren't good or popular or anything like that, but you know Final Fantasy 6 VI and 7 have such huge fan bases that are so dedicated to the games that, to be honest, even it, I rank Final Fantasy 7 in my top 10 games of all time, okay? And I still think it's overrated just because of how so many people think it's, it's the second coming of the Christ or something. It's not. It's just a game. No game could possibly live up to that amount of hype. But now I'm just going off on a tangent, like I always seem to do. So remember, the speedgamers.com on Friday, July 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's going to last 168 hours, and it's for autism care and treatment today. Okay, back to the game. So I was talking about this. I took out a trainer with the three starters from red, blue, and yellow. Well, actually just red and blue because yellow had Pikachu. And yeah, this one was easy because, well, they still have base stat totals in the low 300s. That's not very threatening, even at higher levels. This one's a bit more complicated, though. It's Eevee and the original three Eeveelutions with stats to match. And Jolteon, well, I'm taking care of it with Quilava because, as I've said uh, in uh, the Ecritique Gym, um, I'm just too afraid that my Quilava is going to fall behind because it hasn't evolved into Typhlosion yet, so I'm giving it every opportunity to level up it can possibly get, especially since I'm going to be leveling up Lapras a lot once I get it, which shouldn't be too long now, but it comes at level 20 and the rest of my team is at like 28 or such. 